Sekozoa Gwego Don T. Yungyot, Kungwe Hoenga Yungahaga, Gaderi Womayansta. My name is Don Maracle, and I'm from Tainitanega Mohawk Territory, where I sit with the Bear Clan. And I am the program coordinator for the Office of Indigenous Medical Education here at the University of Toronto in the Faculty of Medicine. So, why do we need more Indigenous healthcare workers? What's really important uh, for people and their health is to see ourselves reflected in the community that we're in. Studies have shown that in the States, in African American communities have actually had better health outcomes when they have African American doctors and healthcare providers. So this is a really interesting thing. It's about seeing oneself reflected as well as seeing oneself uh, being treated with respect and dignity. And it's also about inclusion. We need more Indigenous healthcare providers because we need people who we feel will understand us, who will listen to us, and who will take the time to not only listen to a specific primary complaint, but also to think about the fact that there's a lot more context involved with our families, our communities, and different Indigenous healthcare issues. So what do healthcare providers need to know about working with Indigenous patients? Well, basically that we're all different. There's a lot of variation between individuals, just like within any other group. And it's really important to know that some cultures have people that are often very shy, but every individual is different. So don't make any assumptions uh, about Indigenous people, why they're there, or what their issues are, because that's often been very, very harmful. Also, I'd like to recommend not to out us. Some Indigenous people don't feel safe to self-identify and they have their own reasons for that. It might be for safety, it might be for comfort, or it might be because of trauma. So don't out Indigenous people, but if they decide to start talking themselves about being Indigenous, that opens a door for you to start having a different type of conversation with them. Kindness and respect go a long way to engaging and building a relationship with Indigenous patients. And it basically lays the foundation and the cornerstone for building better health care and better health outcomes for people from any area of life. Context is really important too. A lot of Indigenous people, actually more than half the communities in Canada, don't have safe drinking water. So it's important to know the context of the individual and why they're coming to you. A health care issue is often in an office only dealt with the one primary acute issue. However, with a lot of Indigenous patients, the issues are greater than just the primary issue, but also the context, housing, community, safe water, and a lot of other issues as well. So it's important to keep that in mind when you're working with an Indigenous patient. I know for me, as a cancer survivor, when I went through my cancer journey, I was really alone, and I didn't have a lot of other people to help me or support me along the way. And I'm really happy to say that today there are a lot more supports for cancer patients. And one such resource that's really important are Aboriginal patient navigators. They help Indigenous people to navigate the system, to advocate with them with different doctors and different appointments, but also to connect them with the Indigenous people in the community, whatever the community may be, so that they can also feel that they're not just in a medical situation, but that they also have a community that they can connect to which is very important for the health of a lot of Indigenous people. And as well, that there's also other healers, uh, consultants, friends, colleagues, and traditional teachers that could also be a great help. So these are all the really important things to keep in mind when you're working with Indigenous patients.